on the conclusion of the armistice agreement. Radio address to all the Korean people, July 28, 1953, by Kim Il-sung. Part 1. Dear fellow countrymen, brothers and sisters, heroic officers and men of the People's Army and men and women guerrillas, valiant officers and men of the Chinese People's Volunteers, dear comrades, the armistice agreement was concluded in Panmunjom at 10 o'clock, on July 27, by the representatives of the Korean People's Army and the Chinese People's Volunteers on the one side, and the representatives of the invading armies headed by the U.S. imperialists on the other. In accordance with this armistice agreement, hostilities between the two belligerent sides were stopped at 2200 hours on July 27, and the ceasefire in Korea was realized. This is what not only all the Korean people but the freedom-loving people all over the world hoped for so unanimously and anxiously. The truce is the outcome of three years of our people's heroic struggle to safeguard national freedom and independence against the allied forces of foreign imperialism and the U.S. imperialist stooges, the traitorous Syngman Rhee clique. It is a historic victory won by our people. When the U.S. imperialists, dreaming of world domination, started an invasion against our country and people, they planned to make our people their permanent slaves and our country their colony and military strategic base against the Soviet Union and China. The U.S. imperialist invaders mobilized their ground, naval, and air forces, armed with up-to-date technique, and even their satellite troops. But they failed to attain their sinister designs. They were defeated with tremendous loss in manpower and materiel. In the three years of the Korean War, the U.S. imperialists came to know well how great the might of the Korean people is, how indomitable their fighting spirit is, and what a great vitality the people's democratic system established in the northern half of Korea has. More than once in its 5000-year history, our nation fought heroic struggles against foreign invaders. But never before has there been an instance that all the people united in strength to deal a decisive blow to a formidable enemy and won a shining victory as in this fatherland liberation war and that our people have acquired an increased international prestige and enjoy active support and sympathy from the people all over the world as at present. The heroic Korean people and their armed forces, the Korean People's Army, shoulder to shoulder with the fraternal Chinese People's Volunteers, fought bravely for three years displaying unheard of heroism and patriotic devotion, indomitable perseverance, despite all trials, while receiving unbounded support and encouragement from the peoples of the socialist and people's democratic countries and the freedom-loving people all over the world. Tens of thousands of our best sons and daughters laid down their lives in the sacred war to defend every inch of the land, and our people waged a determined struggle for victory in the war, braving all trials and making all sacrifices. In the sacred war for freedom and independence, the blood shed by our best sons and daughters and the sufferings and sacrifices of our people were not in vain. By their self-sacrificing struggle the Korean people and People's Army safeguarded the people's democratic system set up in the northern half of Korea, the achievements of democratic reforms and the democratic base from the encroachment of the imperialist allied forces led by the U.S. imperialist aggressors, the ringleader of modern imperialism. As a result, the Korean people are in a position to strengthen the revolutionary forces continually in the northern half of Korea in political, economic, military, and cultural fields. And they can escape the fate of being U.S. imperialist colonial slaves and create the conditions for achieving the complete reunification and independence of the country, the greatest desire of the whole nation. Having experienced to the bone the dark colonial rule of Japanese imperialism for nearly half a century, the Korean people know well what a people without a country is like and what the destiny of a colonial slave is. The motherland is the most precious thing for our people, which cannot be bartered away for anything. That was why the Korean people fought a heroic struggle to defend their most precious motherland, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, against the encroachment of imperialist aggressors. Thanks to their heroic efforts, the Korean people and their armed forces, the Korean People's Army, enhanced the position and prestige of our republic at home and abroad and placed our country and people in the rank of progressive countries and progressive champions for national independence, freedom, peace, and democracy. The liberation struggle of the Korean people for freedom and independence became a banner of the national liberation movement of the oppressed people in the East, it showed that the Asian peoples, subjected to every maltreatment by imperialists, have the ability to defend their national freedom and independence with arms in hand. The freedom-loving people all over the world, therefore, called the Korean people progressive fighters for national independence and liberty, and Stalin said that the Workers' Party of Korea, the militant vanguard of the working masses of Korea, is a shock brigade for national independence and freedom. In the crucible of the three-year war, our people were further tempered, the functions and role of the party, the organs of power, and social organizations increased, 
and their functionaries not only became skilled and trained but also accumulated rich experience. In the flames of the war, tens of thousands of tempered cotters were reared in military, political, economic, cultural, and other areas, and the Korean People's Army, strong armed forces of our people, grew into an invincible army. Through the war our people and officers and men of the army strengthened their faith in victory over the far superior enemy and acquired greater national pride. The wealth of our experience, gained in the war, constitutes an asset for the construction of a prosperous independent and democratic state and a precious guarantee for quick rehabilitation and development of our war-ruined country and eternal prosperity and happiness of the country and the people. Through their heroic struggle, the Korean people and their armed forces, the glorious People's Army, exposed to the whole world the true color of the U.S. imperialists, the ringleader of most savage modern imperialism. The Korean War not only smashed the myth of U.S. might but also laid bare the evil nature of the idealized American-style democracy which the U.S. imperialists had tactfully kept under cover for a long time. The U.S. imperialists incurred the anger and indignation of the freedom-loving people all over the world and were isolated from them because of the barbarities they committed against our people during the Korean War and the criminal ways and means of warfare they employed which were unprecedented in history. The military, political, and moral defeat of the U.S. imperialist invaders on the Korean front is a great victory not only of the Korean people in the struggle to defend liberty and independence but also of the freedom-loving democratic camp in the world. The Korean War proved once again that the unity and solidarity of the peace-loving democratic camp is unbreakable and its strength invincible. The United States is said to be the strongest power in the imperialist camp, but it had to fight the war against Korea, not a big country, for three years, only to kneel down to sign the armistice agreement at the very spot where it started the armed aggression three years ago. This fact shows that imperialists cannot encroach upon the territory of other countries any longer as they could do before. This also proves clearly that no aggressive forces can subordinate a people when they know the value of national independence and, relying on the peace-loving democratic camp, turn out as one with a determination to combat aggressors to the end. In the Korean War, the world peace-loving democratic camp grew in strength, whereas contradictions in the imperialist camp were aggravated and the crisis of capitalism became more serious. The U.S. imperialist scheme of aggression was shattered in the Korean War. This compels the war incendiaries to ponder over the consequences of a military adventure for them. The U.S. imperialists regarded their challenge to Korea and China as a decisive step towards a third world war. Their aggressive war in Korea, however, did not bear the fruit they had expected. Our gallant People's Army and the brave Chinese People's Volunteers dealt a decisive blow at the U.S. imperialist invaders, foiled their vicious plan in Korea, and extinguished the flames of war. In this way, they made a great contribution in preventing a third world war and defending peace and security in the world, particularly in the Far East. Part 2 Dear fellow countrymen, brothers and sisters, heroic officers and men of the People's Army and men and women guerrillas, valiant officers and men of the Chinese People's Volunteers, dear comrades, what is the basic factor of the great victory of the Korean people in the Fatherland Liberation War for freedom and independence, and what strength enabled them to achieve such a brilliant victory? The main factor for their victory in the war against the U.S. imperialist invaders, is a firm alliance of our working class and working peasants and the warm support of the democratic forces of all strata for this alliance. This alliance and support represents the basis for the stability of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and for all our people's achievements. After liberation our people built a solid democratic base and strengthened it in all fields of politics, the economy, military, and culture. We founded our armed forces, the Korean People's Army, to defend the people's power from encroachment by the aggressors and created a stable rear and a strong economic foothold which could supply everything for the People's Army in the war. Our people could emerge victorious by fully ensuring manpower and materiel for the war, relying on the powerful democratic base. When they provoked a war in Korea, the U.S. imperialists thought that the Korean people would not dare to match their military technique, particularly their air force. They calculated that they would conquer our people by dint of their military technique. They, however, also made big blunders in this regard. With military technique, they could neither conquer the Korean people nor frighten them. As the Korean War shows, superior military technique is by no means the sole factor for victory in war. Technical superiority alone is not enough to win war. One of the most important factors for victory in war is the political and moral state of the army and the people, and the fighting spirit of the people at the front and in the rear. This the enemy failed to see, it is their main weak point. 
the officers and men of our People's Army and the Chinese People's Volunteers displayed peerless bravery and heroism in fighting the aggressors, whereas the US and its satellite troops openly manifested war weariness and cowardice. That was because the aggressive armies knew that the war they were waging was an unjust war and a war in the interest of monopoly capitalists. The officers and men of the Korean People's Army and the Chinese People's Volunteers were aware that the war against the US imperialist invaders was a righteous war and that their sacred duty was to fight devotedly in the war. When they started an aggressive war against the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the US imperialists also counted on isolating the Korean people from the freedom-loving people of the world. But the imperialists failed to do so. On the contrary, the Korean people enjoyed active support, aid, love, and respect from the freedom-loving people in their heroic struggle against the US and British armed interventionists. The freedom-loving people all over the world denounced these interventionists for their outrages in Korea and waged a resolute struggle to end the piratic armed intervention of US imperialism. Many countries of the socialist and democratic camp gave us not only moral but enormous economic aid. Particular mention should be made of the movement to resist US aggression and aid Korea by the Chinese people who dispatched their volunteers to the Korean front in the grimmest days of the Fatherland Liberation War. The officers and men of the Chinese People's Volunteers, full of noble internationalist spirit and fraternal amity, fought a heroic battle shoulder to shoulder with our People's Army on the Korean front, overcoming all difficulties. The mental and political support and material aid to the Korean people given by the peoples of the socialist and democratic camp and the Chinese people's volunteers' participation in the Korean front are one of the important factors that made the Korean people win the victory in their struggle against the US imperialist aggressors. In the vanguard of the fighting Korean people stands the Workers' Party of Korea, a new type of Marxist-Leninist party, basing itself on an ever-victorious Marxist-Leninist theory in all its activities and creatively applying the experience of revolutionary parties to our country. In the difficult period of the war the members of the Workers' Party did not hesitate to lay down their lives for the country and the people, and always mobilized the people for victory in the van of the struggle for safeguarding national independence, freedom, and honor. They demonstrated through their practical activity and struggle for the country and the people that they are boundlessly faithful to the interests of the people and that they are the staunch and consistent defenders of these interests. Firmly rallied around the Democratic Front for the reunification of the fatherland under the leadership of the Workers' Party, the Korean people from all walks of life workers, peasants, intellectuals, entrepreneurs, traders, and handy craftsmen fought valiantly for national freedom and independence. All these factors made it possible for the Korean people to win a brilliant victory in the fatherland liberation war against the US-led imperialist allied forces.